so in emerging electronics lab every lab you have to adjust the ten experiments so the experiments that we have selected for this lab are as follows first one is to study various types of active and passive components so you must be knowing active and passive components from electrical engineering that uh, uh, resistance capacitance and inductors are active uh, which are passive components and active components are transistors diode etc and second experiment is uh, identification of various types of printed circuit boards and soldering techniques so this is these two all are theoretical kind of uh, experiments so you have to uh, study these two and third experiment is study of lab equipments like uh, cro multimeter function generator power supply and breadboard okay so this uh, this involves the visit of lab in the lab you can see the components the equipments like uh, cathode ray oscilloscope their signals can be visualized multimeter for uh, the reading the voltages currents etc in the circuits function generator power supply and breadboard and breadboard is the uh, place uh, yeah we get uh, kind of uh, circuit board where we can make so different different kind of circuits so this is the third experiment fourth experiment that uh, is in required in this lab is p n junction diode so uh, we have to draw the characteristics of p n junction diode so correct by characteristics i mean vi characteristics of p n junction diode so vi characteristics is the characteristics uh, of p n junction diode uh, the graph between voltage and current the input voltage and the current flowing through the diode so after drawing the characteristics of p n junction diode we have to calculate the static resistance dynamic resistance from the vi characteristics graph and fifth number experiment is uh, about the application of p n junction diode in the half wave and full wave rectifier half wave and full wave rectifier if, uh, if uh, all of you have uh, watched the lectures of first unit then you will be able to understand these half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier and what is the rms value of voltage in half wave rectifier and what is rms value of voltage in the full wave rectifier dc voltage or average voltage in the half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier and the ripple factor other measurements also can be done like if you can also calculate the efficiency of the rectifier you can also calculate the ripple factor of the you know, this uh, uh, form factor and other parameters of the half wave and full wave rectifier in this experiment and sixth number experiment we have to do stand, sorry this is sixth actually characteristics of bgt uh, in the common emitter configuration and uh, this uh, this is actually the uh, sixth number is characteristics of gener diode vi characteristics of gener diode similar to the pn junction diode we have to uh, study gener diode so this gener diode characteristics can be studied in the sixth experiment and in the seventh experiment graphical measurement of forward and reverse resistance uh, sorry uh, the characteristics of bjt common emitter conductor it is uh, verification of truth table for the logic gates so this is uh, uh, just a uh, logic gate circuit will be there the logic gate circuit can be made using diode using transistor using uh, field effect transistor etc and uh, we have to verify the truth table for the logic gate a ninth number experiment is the implementation of a given boolean function using logic gate is one uh, sum of uh, sop and pos so sum of products and products of sum the yeah, two form of representation of every boolean logic it can be represented as sum of products or sub product of sum uh, so these two forms are of boolean functions so in uh, we have to implement these forms of uh, boolean functions with the help of logic gates and after that we have to verify that truth table from the circuit also and from the most logically truth table and from the circuit the same truth table is being verified or not last stage uh, to study operational amplifier this is uh, in the third unit of uh, our syllabus operational amplifier so 
this is the last experiment that how operational amplifier is used for addition and subtraction of voltages so operational amplifier as the name suggests it is used for the mathematical operations two operations we will do in the experiment addition and subtraction so although this can also be used for the log anti log uh, multiplier divider uh, and many other uh, applications also apart from the operational ampli uh, applications this is also used for the digital logic gates rectifiers smart regards and many other many there are a number of applications of operational amplifier but in the experiment we have to do only two applications first uh, application is adder and second application is uh, the subtractor okay so this uh, this adder and addition and subtraction these two we have to study okay so this, this is the experiment list and minimum 10 experiment have to be done if someone uh, or somebody is interested in more experiments you can do additional experiments like uh, you can do the other configuration of bjt apart from the common emitter if anybody wants common base and common collector cb or cc uh, configuration also then that experiments can also be done uh, similar to that you can also extend the experiments by uh, including the other applications of operational amplifier like inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier etc so other uh, experiments can be done also uh, the more experiments can be done here also here you can uh, take the uh, bjt or pn junction diode uh, uh, characteristics and the, the fet characteristics also okay. so the first thing let us come go to the first thing first so the let us come first experiment is this one study of various types of active and passive component so i am taking passive components first uh, passive components are the resistance capacitance and inductors so let us see first of all passive components so first passive component is resistance our uh, resistance is uh, like this in which there are four strips and uh, these strips are helpful in determining the resistance values so uh, what is the you see this is in the 12th class or 11 12th uh, depending on the board type of board so you must have studied already this the way uh, how can we calculate the value of resistance using the color coding can anybody tell me that what is the way to calculate resistance value from this color coding What is the rule? Okay, no problem. So the this is the the, the I mean, so we keep the resistance in such a way so that uh, the colors the first let's see first two bands are the resistance value and the third band serves as multiplier to this resistance value and fourth band is the tolerance and uh, we keep the tolerance always in the right side and the resistance bands in the left side so uh, this is the table from which we can see that what are the number given to the colors so the colors like this is black brown red orange yellow green or blue violet white white gold and this uh, silver so gold and silver these are two tolerance colors for the tolerance from this we can calculate the tolerance value and these colors these are these digits are used for the resistance purpose and this is the third digit the third strip for multiplication that comes from the third strip of the color coding of the resistance. Okay. So let 
So this, uh, from this uh, color coding, we can do, so one uh, short formula is also there for this color coding to remember that what is the sequence of colors. Anyone can tell me the what is the short trick, I uh, mean one formula that usually people say that for this, for remembering this these color sequences. Yes, sir. Yes, what it, how do you remember this color sequence? Uh, B.B. Roy of Great Britain has very good wife. Yes, B.B. Roy of Great Britain has very good, good wife. By that you can remember this uh, color sequence and uh, then determine. So one example is uh, shown here. For in this example, in, in this resistance, the first color is yellow, and the second color is violet, third is red, and fourth one is gold. So for the yellow color, the number is four. So that therefore I have taken four here. And the second color is second digit. So violet. So for second digit, it will come violet. Violet here. 7 number 7 and for the third digit is red and for red multiplier is of 100 so from here it will come multiplier to be 100 value and fourth color is golden color so for gold see for gold color or the tolerance is 5% for silver color tolerance is 10% from that you can say this so 4 7 into 100 that is 4700 plus minus 5% this will be the value of resistance we can also we have resistance meters uh, in the multimeter that is uh, available in the lab so from multimeter you can, you can also because this is the ideal value that is expected from the color code but practically this may be varying plus minus five percent so uh, value can be uh, some uh, 4700 means mm, this can be uh, or 4705 and 4710 like that so value can vary so that that little variation can be measured with the help of multimeter multimeters are available in the lab that uh, means you don't have to calculate this by using color code every time you just have to put multimeter at both of the terminals so uh, of the resistance here one terminal of the multimeter will be connected and here another terminal of the multimeter will be connected uh, from that you can calculate the resistance of this resistance what will be the resistance value for this resistance you just uh, uh, calculate it and tell me One example is shown in this slide. What will be the resistance value for this example? First color is red. So what is the value for red? What is the value for that? You can see yeah. that is 2. 2. Okay. So this is 2. And this is also 2. Multiplier is black. 1. So multiplier is 1. Plus minus 5. And this is plus minus 5 so 5% tolerance and this so third value is multiplied so multiply is only 1 this will be 22 ok let us see I have this so this is 22 ohm and plus minus 5% this resistance have a small value yeah, just you by, by seeing a size you cannot determine the value 
can determine the value only by uh, knowing its uh, color and uh, and if you have multimeter you can know value by connecting the terminals to the multimeter now let us come to the capacitors there are many type of types of capacitors in the lab and in practical life also there are different kind of capacitors used for different purposes uh, so some other is this mis kind of uh, uh, capacitors are there that that are not available in the labs these are actually formed by in the devices because of some reason so vacuum and air and glass silicium like these components are used for this these are the automatically formed kind of capacitors second uh, kind type of capacitors are ceramic capacitors ceramic capacitors are actually available in the labs and uh, these uh, ceramic materials means there are some uh, insulator material in between the plates of the uh, capacitor so these these are the some round shape capacitors i will show you how how they, they look like second kind of capacitors are film capacitors so uh, in the between the in between the plates there is film of the material so that that film is you uh, film or foil so different kind of uh, materials are used for the film so these are film type of capacitor and third is electrolyte if if so the capacitors here are divided based on the type of ma uh, is material in between the plates so in insulation in insulation material so if film is there then film capacitor if ceramic is there in between then ceramic capacitor if electrolytes are there in between then the capacitor is called electrolyte capacitor so uh, electrolytes are um, polarized materials so therefore they, they are, these capacitors are called polarized capacitors also so electrolytic capacitors are have liquid kind of things in between and uh, uh, these capacitors are also used for the higher values compared to the ceramic capacitors and the super capacitors are special capacitors which are very fast in charging and very slow and also very fast in discharging also so this these capacitors have very fast charging capacity and these do not follow the charging discharging laws that we study in our books they have different kind of charging discharging rules which are not in the integers they, they are in the fractionals so fractional order kind of equations different uh, different equations are used for the super capacitors like in the other capacitors we use differential equations to describe the behavior or to describe the current flowing through the capacitors current and voltage and the capacitor with the help of differential equations but uh, in the super capacitors the normal ordinary differential equations are not used so these are different uh, capacitors these are also called pseudo capacitors but these do not fo follow the rules of normal capacitors or uh, some some people also call them double layer capacitors so this is um, different actually uh, actually different so there were double layer capacitors is actually different capacitor because we usually have single uh, separation between the plates if there are two uh, separations the double layers then they are definitely the behavior of capacitor will be different as compared to the normal capacitor so this is the picture of ceramic capacitor that you might have seen the small pcbs of uh, some electronic circuits if you have seen and these are the usually available capacitors these are of small values generally some uh, there are some uh, in the ceramic capacitors there are some capacitors of paper capacitors like in between paper is there as a insulator and there are capacitors called mica capacitors if the mica is in between as a insulator and this is the ceramics because the ceramic is there in between the two points of the bars 
second one is film capacitor so these are some uh, pictures this is a picture of film capacitor there is a film between the two plates of the capacitor this is a, these are the electrolytic capacitors these are also um, used for many applications uh, a big electrolytic capacitors are available in the fans that we use in day to day life Uh, this is a super, uh, super capacitor. Uh, this actually is a different kind of capacitor. Uh, this these capacitors are not usually available in the market. These are special capacitors, and applications are also special. So, in general applications they do not use super capacitors. Super capacitors are uh, currently in the research. They are not too much in the practice because analysis of super capacitor is different uh, from the uh, normal capacitor. Inductor. Inductor is uh, nothing but in inductors many times are not uh, available. So they are made. So they are made in the lab. Like here I, I have just uh, rounded two rounds of the two rounds of the a single wire. So it, it become a capacitor. Here there are five rounds of a wire. This become a capacitor. A inductor sorry. I, I, again this is also inductor. This is this is the uh, one uh, purchased market marketed uh, capacitor inductor in which there are rounds of coils. Coils are rounded in from, and they are separated also from each other. Okay, so these are the capacitor and inductors and resistances. Okay, and um, about the active components you already know active components are diodes so the diode diode you already know if you have seen the videos you must be knowing about the diode a lot so and have you seen a, a diode ever kisi ne diode dekha hai kya kabhi practically diode hota kaisa hai Okay. Okay. I Diodic black color ka. ceramic material hota hai. Aur isme ek side ek strip hoti hai. Aur dusri side black hota hai pura. Actual uh, diode to Akuma Apple Lab, maybe probably Kabin Kapanga, but Abi may have quick picture uh, so got wrong. Usme 
आप देख सकते हो विजिबल नाउ दिस इज द डायोड इन दिस वट इज seen like this so near the big portion of black is there that is actually p side and a small portion of black is n side so this side is p and this side is n okay so uh, now other identification is not required this and, and uh, there are many kind of uh, diodes depending on the different different uh, uh, provider then their names are in they start from the in 004 005 like that okay so uh, this this is, this is the diode and how it looks and uh, another diode is gena uh, diode so gena diode looks like this similar to the diode in the gena diode also the p side is this this and the strip means the black strip is in the n side and many times this uh, this is a silver strip silver color strip similar to the normal diode but here it is a black strip so it depends on the uh, provider supplier but uh, this can be identified just what is the voltage so voltage reading breakdown voltage will be written over the diode and what is the breakdown because breakdown voltage is important vj is um, vj we say general voltage so at which time uh, at which voltage this will um, general diode will be stable the reverse bias that voltage will be available in the specifications of this type okay so this is the gena diode and the gena diode is used as voltage regulator voltage regulator means this is used to make constant suppose suppose aapne kisi kisi ghar mein stabilizer lagao stabilizer is actually a voltage regulator voltage regulator means it makes a voltage constant in the output so this uh, this gena diode does work of stabilizer stabilizer of the voltage means uh, if um, uh, output voltage is unstable moving up and down then if you use this gena diode then this will do the work this will do the voltage this will make the voltage stable after gena diode let us see one transistor also because these are the active this is active component or passive component gena diode is an active component or passive component passive component sir okay And this is not a passive component uh, because they, this doesn't follow the uh, ohms law so we say this is an active component a diode transistor and um, all active components in fact okay and other component is this transistor transistor is active component or passive component transistor is active or passive active sir active why why this is active and how how do you define active and passive transistor is active component this is a transistor this is how transistor look bc547 bc547 is a basic npn transistor this is a npn transistor and from you put a transistor like this then this terminal the first terminal is emitter terminal 
this is emitter terminal and middle one is base and the last one is collector so if you keep a transistor like this similar to the that is shown in the picture then first is emitter and second is base and third one is collector and uh, this can be if you still if you don't know that which which terminal is what then what you can do you can do the continuity test time using the multimeter you can uh, connect a neutral wire of multimeter over the middle middle wire and then the line wire of the multimeter can be connected to this if this is turning on then this junction is pn junction and this transistor can be pn pnp or if this is turning off this is not continuous then this, this is np junction um this is reverse wire junction this is np and then in pn transistor the type of transistor can be determined by the help of that uh means with the help of multimeter also okay whether this is npn or pnp transistor okay this was the first experiment i will continue with the next experiment in the next class how to do that okay thank you thanks for joining thank you all thank you sir thank you, sir. i will i will turn on the attendance attendance link is available in the google classroom just uh, i'm turning on it uh, the, the, this is a different link uh, from the theory class so you have to take care of that this time turning on you, you all of you can fill the attendance i'm sharing in the chat also ceramic cultures guru prasad tripathi ne question puchha hai ki sir ceramic hota kya hai so the ceramic is actually like uh, ceramic means dielectric और डायलेक्ट्रिक अब आप बोलोगे डायलेक्ट्रिक क्या है डायलेक्ट्रिक इज इंसुलेटर इंसुलेटर मटेरियल्स फ्रॉम विच इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कैन नॉट फ्लो फ्लो दैट मटेरियल्स आर सेरामिक मटेरियल्स So you can search. There are many materials in the comes in the other uh, ceramic materials like clay and porcelain, uh, porcelain cups, or there are seven ten types of ceramic materials. ओके okay, कोई और क्वेश्चन है किसी को क्वेश्चन हम लोग प्रैक्टिकल के जो एक्सपेरिमेंट जिसमें कुछ परफॉर्म करना है या सर्किट बनाना है उसके लिए मैंने एक वेबसाइट बताई हुई है टिंकर कैट तो आप सबको एक टिंकर कैट पर एक अकाउंट बना लीजिए टिंकर कैट डॉट कॉम पर वहां पर हम लोग सर्किट्स बनाएंगे जैसे वी आई करेक्टरिस्टिक्स अगर देखना है तो यहीं पर आप देख सकते हैं जीना डायोड की करेक्टरिस्टिक्स देखना है तो टिंकर कैट की हेल्प से देखी जा सकती है ब्रेड बोर्ड आपको समझना है तो ब्रेड बोर्ड वहां पर आपको देख जाएगा ऑस्लोस्कोप देखना है तो ऑस्लोस्कोप भी वहां पर देख सकते हैं उनको यूज करके देख सकते हैं मतलब वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म है यहाँ पे हम लोग सिमुलेशन कर सकते हैं 